Hi there, and welcome back to our course on understanding medications. You may remember taking an anti-emetic at one point in your life to reduce that nausea and vomiting, but it simply didn't work. And you may think, well, why was that? Well, the process of emesis, or vomiting, is a fairly complex one. It uses four distinctly different neural pathways and different neurotransmitters. So in this lesson, we're going to aim to picture those pathways and picture the neurotransmitters involved, and from that we're going to be able to predict which one of the medications that we have would be most effective in emesis using that pathway. So first, let's overview each one of the pathways, and then I'll give you a little bit more details about the neurotransmitters and also the medications that are most effective. There is a neural pathway for emesis from the gastrointestinal tract to the vomiting center in the brain stem. We use that pathway when there is damage to the gastrointestinal tract. There's also a pathway from the chemoreceptor trigger zone that's right next to the vomiting center, but outside of the blood-brain barrier, we use that pathway when there's some sort of a toxin or a chemical imbalance in the system. And there's also a pathway that goes from the vestibular area, or in other words, the inner ear to the vomiting center, and that is of course going to be important for motion sickness. And finally, there's a pathway that goes directly from the cerebral cortex, the higher brain center, to the vomiting center. And that one is the one that is involved in really emotional types of vomiting. So those are the four pathways involved in emesis, and right now we're going to understand everything that we need to know about two of those pathways so that we can really understand the other two in the next lesson. The pathways from the higher brain center to the vomiting center, the ones that are used in emotional types of vomiting and when there's damage in the cerebral cortex, is not the cause of vomiting in many cases, so the most important thing to know about emesis from that pathway is that it's best treated with the benzodiazepines. So the azepam and azolam drugs that we've spoken about before, recall we've noted that five of the top 200 most prescribed medications are from that drug class. Clinically speaking, the pathway from the inner ear to the vomiting center is much more important as it's the pathway in motion sickness and when there's problems in the inner ear. That pathway uses two different neurotransmitters, histamine 1 and also acetylcholine. So the best medications to reduce motion sickness are the antihistamines and the anticholinergic agents. The anticholinergic agents include hyoscine, sometimes known as scopolamine, and those are best for the person who has motion sickness along with spasms in the GIT. Since the rest and digest portion of the autonomic nervous system uses acetylcholine as the main neurotransmitter, anticholinergic agents are against the rest and digest system. And therefore, anticholinergic agents will result in a decrease in movement and fluids in the GIT, including the fluids in the mouth. So dry mouth is a very common side effect of the anticholinergic agents. If there's no spasms in the GIT, the most important medications for motion sickness will usually be the antihistamines that break through the blood-brain barrier. Those block this histamine 1 receptor, but they also have some action in blocking the other receptor, this acetylcholine receptor, so they have some anticholinergic actions as well. Therefore, diphenhydramine and dimenhydrinate the antihistamines that break into the blood-brain barrier are two of the most prescribed medications for motion sickness. Probably the most important thing to note about antihistamines is that they have both short and long-term side effects due to the very fact that they cross into the brain. In the short term, 
They make a person drowsy and uncoordinated because histamine is used as a neurotransmitter in the brain for maintaining awareness. The final thing that you need to keep in mind is that the histamine 1 is not used in these other pathways at all. So while the antihistamines are the most effective medication for motion sickness, they will have very little effect on vomiting that originates in other places other than the inner ear. We've just learned that the pathway for motion sickness involves just two neurotransmitters, histamine 1 and acetylcholine. Therefore, any medication that is effective for motion sickness is going to have to block at least one of those two neurotransmitters, and it will need to cross into the brain. So let's take a scenario. You've invited three friends to a fishing trip, and all three came with a problem. Joel has had hay fever that's so bad that he used a whole box of tissues on the way to meet you at the marina. He's skippering the boat today, and he never gets motion sickness. Alma has had some digestive system problems today with some spasms and loose stools, and she's afraid that the boat trip will make things worse because she occasionally gets motion sickness. Vivan gets motion sickness even if he looks at a boat but he doesn't have anything else wrong with him. You are the responsible one, and you've got a first aid kit with some over-the-counter medications, including diphenhydramine, an antihistamine that breaks into the blood-brain barrier, loratadine, an antihistamine that stays out in the periphery and doesn't go into the brain, hyoscine, or sometimes called scopolamine, an anticholinergic agent. Which medication would you choose for each of your friends? And you are correct if you had said that Joel, your friend with the allergies who never becomes seasick, should get the loratadine. Loratadine doesn't break into the blood-brain barrier, so it has no effect on motion sickness, and it doesn't cause drowsiness or confusion. The diphenhydramine would have worked well for Joel, but it would have been contraindicated since he's skippering the boat today. So the choice of a non-drowsy relief for allergies is a prudent one. You would have also made the best choice if you had given Alma the hyoscine, sometimes called scopolamine. Alma had a overactive digestive system before she got to the boat, and she was worried that the motion of the boat could make it worse. In this case, hyacin will act in two ways. It'll prevent the motion sickness by blocking the neurotransmission from the inner ear to the vomiting center, but anticholinergic agents are also against the rest and digest system in the periphery. So hyacin is going to decrease some of the overactivity in the GIT. And finally, Vivan gets motion sickness quite easily. So you would have been correct if you gave him diphenhydramine about an hour before the trip started. He may get a bit drowsy, but since he's not the one skippering the boat, there shouldn't be a problem. Hope you have a good time.